Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm QC. Welcome to another edition of Talking and Grubbing. Well, after 82 games, the 2017 NBA playoffs are here, and 15 teams are going to seek to take what LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers currently hold, the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Now, for the first matchup, the number one Boston Celtics versus the number eight Chicago Bulls. The Celtics have improved tremendous, tremendously excuse me, over the past few years under head coach Brad Stevens. Isaiah Thomas is having an MVP type year. Also, they have some solid players in Avery Bradley and Jay Crowder. But, you know, the Celtics made a big acquisition in the offseason getting Al Horford. He can protect the paint. He can rebound, block shots. But what gets slept on with Horford is his passing. And also, the Celtics, they're a very physical team, and they're a pretty good defensive team. On the flip side, with the Chicago Bulls, you got some championship experience in D. Wade, who's a, M who's a three-time NBA champion, and Rajon Rondo, who won an NBA championship with the Boston Celtics in 2008. Also, you got Nico Miritich, who's been hot from three-point range since the second half of the season. And also, you got Jimmy Butler, who can hit some clutch shots for you. But what gets slept on with the Bulls is their offensive rebounding. They're top five in offensive rebounding in the NBA. This is a pretty tough matchup, too close to call. But I'm going to say the Celtics in seven. The next matchup is the number two Cleveland Cavaliers, the defending NBA champions, against the number seven Indiana Pacers. LeBron and Paul George are back at it again in the playoffs. This time, LeBron's in a Cavs uniform instead of a Heat uniform. The Cavs staggered a lot during the All-Star break. Matter of fact, they ranked 20-something in defensive efficiency. And a lot of people keep pointing out that teams outside of the top 10 haven't won an NBA championship, championship excuse me, since the 0-1 Lakers. But you still got LeBron. You also still got Kyrie and Kevin Love. You also got... Offensive rebounding monster in Tristan Thompson, and pretty solid bench in Richard Jefferson, Kyle Corver, and Channing Fry. But don't sleep on Indiana because Paul George has been beasting, especially in the month of April, where he scored 30 points per game in five straight games to clinch the playoffs for the Pacers. And also, the Pacers have a young up and coming big in Miles Turner who can definitely protect the rim pretty well and also get some rebounds. You also have a great point guard, Jeff Teague, who came over from Atlanta in the offseason that can distribute the ball as well as get to the rack. And you got C.J. Miles, who's a pretty good three-point shooter. Matter of fact, he's having a career year with 41% from the three-point line. But I still say that the Cavs will win this series in five games. Next matchup is the number three Toronto Raptors, Raptors excuse me, versus the number six Milwaukee Bucks. Toronto is trying to build momentum off of their Eastern Conference Finals appearance last year where they ultimately lost to the Cavaliers in six games. Um, besides having DeMar, DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, they've added a couple of pieces in the, at the trade deadline in Serge Ibaka, who is a defensive player, you know, all-team de defensive player. And P.J. Tucker, who can really guard the perimeter. And they also have a big in Giannis Valanciunas, who can protect the rim. But he can be questionable at the free throw line. Also, they have dramatically improved defensively since the All-Star break. You know, becoming the 15th, what, top five in defensive efficiency since the All-Star break. But Milwaukee, you got Giannis Aladokupo a.k.a. the Greek freak who can <laughs> block anything from anywhere, who can get to the hole, dunk, rebound, 
But the only problem is his shooting. But you also have, but he also has another great teammate in Chris Middleton, who can get to the rack and shoot as well. And also you got veterans in Jason Terry, and Matthew Delvadova, who won a championship last year with the Cavaliers. Now this series is a toss up. Anyone who just thinks that the Bucks are going to get rolled over, I don't think so. So my prediction in this series is. And upset. So I picked the Bucks and six. The last matchup is the number four Washington Wizards versus the number five Atlanta Hawks. John Wall and Bradley Beal are the one of the best tandems in the NBA, but they also have some solid bigs in Martin Gortat, also um Oubre who can rebound. But the problem is they bench is very questionable. Atlanta, you know, they're San Antonio oriented since their head coach Mike Budenholzer is a disciple of Greg Popovich as he spent um almost 20 years as assistant on the Spurs and excuse me they have some pretty good players in Dennis Schroeder, Paul Millsap, also they got a pretty good bench in Mike Muscata, Kent Bazemore. So Atlanta, you can't sleep on them, but I still say the Wizards will win this series in 7. You know, it's going to be a battle from start to finish. Anyways, that's my NBA playoff preview for the East. Stay tuned for my Western Conference playoff preview for the first round. Till next time, y'all have a good one. Love y'all to life. Deuces.